Welcome to episode 8 of our on-farm podcast in association with the Royal Highland Agricultural Society of Scotland. My name's Monty, Ross Montague, and this is our first episode to go out after the 180th Highland show unfortunately couldn't take place. Well done to everyone who took part in the RACBI's campaign hashtag keep talking to get on the phone to people, to stay connected and to basically look after our mental health. We enjoyed reading all of the posts on social media. They were brilliant. Thank you also, huge thanks in fact, to everyone who used the time they might have been at the Highland Show to catch up with their podcasts. We were delighted to see listener numbers shoot up last week. Brilliant. If you know anyone who would love to hear our future episodes on farm, which is on food, agriculture and rural matters, please share. Please point them in the right direction. You know how simple it is to listen. And I'm sure you guys, as our listeners, would be the best place to attract new listeners to. Thank you. Today, right now, is quite literally the calm before the storm. I'm just about to start gathering in sheep for clipping. We've got a new squad of clippers coming this year. I believe we've got some award-winning Scottish and, and, and UK shearers this year. And that links in very well with what we're going to discuss later in this episode when we'll talk about some of the competitions and uh, skills supported by RAS. This episode is all about the Highland Society's grants, bursaries and other support. We're going to start off with some hearty congratulations. To our two gold winners, Lambert and Dyson and Limagreen UK. Your medals will be coming to you in the next couple of weeks. Thank you and stay safe. So that was Highland Society Director Jim Warnock announcing this year's two gold award winners in the annual RAS Technical Innovation Awards. That was Limagrain UK for their winter wheat breeding programme and Lambert and Dyson for their PTO hot water pressure washer. Both of those companies told us they're extremely chuffed with the accolade. My name is Matthew Lambert. I'm sales director in a family company called Lambert and Dyson Limited. I'm Will Charlton, Arable Marketing Manager for Lee McGrain UK. Our hot water PTO pressure washer unit that, that won the gold award. Usually when you're running a hot water pressure washer, you need an external power source, either mains electric or a generator or something along those lines. The beauty about this machine and the, the innovation with it is that we've used a, a burner unit that pulls all of its power from the tractor. If you have a barrel of water in a field, within minutes of, of getting set up, you're up and running. So the award was won for our wheat breeding programme. We put together a presentation and package of the activities which we carry out at our main wheat breeding research facility in Woolpit in Suffolk. We also got a person with a drone to take a, a flight over of the, the extensive trials we have at Woolpit to show the scale um, and size of the, the work we carry out. Three years ago we won the silver award which we were delighted with. The way that the system works you, you are allowed to reapply the same machine to be upgraded to a gold award and all being well if you can show that it's doing the job that you told them three years ago and that sales are going well and every customer's happy with it, then they look at that and, and say yes or no to whether you're good for a gold. Uh, and apparently we were. It means a huge amount. It means a huge amount to get this kind of recognition from an institution such as the Royal Highland Show. All farmers in this country, we've found, love a recommendation. If they're looking at a piece of machinery and they think, mm, yeah, it looks all right, but I'd like to know what somebody else thinks about it, to have an organisation like the Highland, a well-respected society, to put a rubber stamp on something and say, yeah, this is a good machine, that's cracking advertising for us. Thank you and well done to both companies and also all those that won silver awards and commendations. It's been part of the DNA of the society since it was founded in 1784 to reward this kind of excellence and innovation. The 
Society is based on, on a royal charter and within that is a, a clear and strong education and learning and, and development link. Alan Laidlaw is the society's chief executive. So there's a strong root and a strong thread of DNA right the way through the society of supporting learning and education through charitable bursaries or events or, or training and competitions. Not everyone knows that about the society. They don't understand that um, we could fulfil our charitable requirements away from the show as well. Many RAS awards and bursaries go to encourage and support younger people, not least through partnerships with the Nuffield Farming Scholarship Trust, offering life-changing travel and study overseas. So I am Penny Montgomery. I am the Chief Executive of the Scottish Association of Young Farmers Clubs and I'm also this year a current Nuffield Scholar. Nuffield is one of the organisations that RAS sponsor. So they are my official sponsor for my study at the moment. And then RAS are also just a huge supporter of SAYFC. So on a practical level, they're a landlord. We're based on the showground. But then they give us so much more um, help and advice throughout the year, financially and physically as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about your scholarship and how RAS have helped with that? I was awarded an Uffield scholarship in November 2018, so I'm a 2019 Uffield scholar. And the scholarship involves um, individuals studying a topic that they're passionate about. So my topic is the role young farmers groups should be playing in developing British agriculture. So once you're through the application process, you're then allocated uh, a sponsor. And I was lucky enough that RAS were my were my sponsor. And sponsor, that means what? They help you to meet the costs? Or? RAS provide funding to Nuffield. We're sent off, we can go wherever we want in the world to look at different organisations, different individuals and how they're working on that particular topic you're looking at. One of the biggest challenges I've had with my Nuffield scholarship is you can go anywhere in the world, which sounds great, but actually trying to pin it down can be quite difficult as well. So, so far I have been to um, America, Canada, New Zealand. I had been hoping to go a bit more out of my comfort zone and go to a sort of non-English speaking country, maybe Kenya, um, Singapore, but uh, COVID put pay to that, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, so your plans are a bit of another bit of a casualty of COVID then, really? The full conference has been cancelled, but they're still working on what the alternative's going to look like. It could be that we present in 2021 instead of 2020, but in the meantime, we need to get on and write our reports. You've personally obviously had support from RAS, but you're obviously also chief exec of SAYFC, um, and RAS are, as you say, a, a big supporter. Do you want to talk a bit more about that? Yeah, so, you know, RAS are there. They've got a fantastic staff team that can offer support and help to me individually. They're always there to help a helping hand. They cut our grass outside the Young Farmer Centre. So there's a whole vast range of practical ways they help, as well as um, some financial assistance as well. So there's some annual scholarships that we receive from RAS. So we are lucky enough that we get to send an individual to the Oxford Farming Conference every year. So that's subsidised by RAS. We've applied in the past for various different um, sort of projects and initiatives. So every second year we have a long haul study tour, um, which RAS have contributed towards as well. So in 2018, there was 16 individuals went to California. There was supposed to be 16 individuals going to Chile in December this year. But again, that's been um, put on hold it's one of the projects they're funding at the moment for us, which is one of the most important for me, is we have a leadership programme, Cultivating Leaders. Yeah, yeah. So again, yeah. RAS have, have supported um, funding for that for the next couple of years as well, which is fantastic just to have that. So it is a six-day programme. We are lucky that we are able to pull in a lot of sort of industry experts, so Royal Bank of Scotland, Campbell Dallas, Galbraith, Leddingham Charmers, and they get that sort of real life example from the experts and the knowledge, whether it's built doing a business plan or delving more into the finance of issues. Then we've got that really great pool of people that actually sort of lead it and contribute it, which is great. So really all about bringing on the next generation of, well, as you call them, leaders. Yeah. 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 And I think so they do, you know, they get that practical knowledge 
but also the key thing is actually the network. So they then go away with it's 16 individuals from throughout Scotland that take part. Most of them might not have met their counterparts before, but actually they've been really strong networks going forward. So they've got their, their, their counterparts, but they've also then got those networks of the professionals as well that they can tap into. And it's maybe not this year, next year, it's maybe in 10 years time, but they've made those connections that they can use in the future. Yeah, I, a key thing that SAYFC and, and I'm guessing RAS share, you're about bringing people in and showcasing what agriculture and food and, and the rural world is about and also opening up people's eyes to the career opportunities within that those sectors as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we've got a role to play you know, we've got access to young people that maybe haven't actually made decisions about their careers. And it's it's not all about pointing them to be farmers. There's so many different career options within farming and different support um, roles that they could play within within agriculture and rural as well. It's not just about farming. Obviously, the, the, the Highland Show didn't happen this year. And unfortunately, we've got none of the local shows happening this year either. Um, what do you think your members are going to miss most about the shows? So there's two things really. There is just like everyone else is just going to the show and meeting up with people you don't see that regularly. And it might be somebody from Caithness that's meeting somebody from Lanarkshire. You know, it's that whole network and that broken sort of chain. And the other thing actually is the competition for us. So Young Farmers is built around competition. So things like tug of war, There'll be members who are training from January with tug of war teams and they might be training one or two times a week and they don't have that sort of social interaction at the moment. And it goes for all our other competitions, stock judging, arts and crafts. They don't just rock up at the Highland Show and take part. It's actually that sort of build up. It's eliminations at some of the local shows. It is that sort of that interaction ongoing, not just that sort of four days of the Highland Show. And it's fun. It's fun as well, isn't it? It's social and <laughs> yes. it's fun. You go, you know, yeah. I personally remember back to my young farmers days and the show circuit. And if we didn't have a local show, we'd be looking to another one to go to every weekend of the year if we could. Yep. Yeah. 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 Completely. It's it's a big hole. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I think, you know, speaking to you, I wish I could be more involved now because that was a, just a brilliant time, young farmers. And I don't think I would personally be able to do this, for example, a podcast, if it hadn't been for Young Farmers Speech Making and if it hadn't been for the network, the network that you meet. And yes, that can be fun and it can be silly and it can be over a few drinks or more than a few drinks, but it sticks with you. It's a very valuable, valuable thing that sticks with you. Young Farmers does so much for people in the rural Scotland. I think that's where actually the, the, the great support we get from RAS is partly down to the fact that a lot of the RAS directors were past members as well. So they'll, as you've just said, they're potentially where they are because of the skills they gained from young farmers. And actually going forward, we are the feeder for their next trustees as well, their next directors. So yeah, so it's good to that we're working so closely together. We regularly see people developing hugely, whether they be like Penny Montgomery travelling on an Uffield scholarship or somebody going on one of our bursaries to the Royal Agricultural Society to the Commonwealth. It's quite a broad mix of, of support that we give to people. And mostly it's about people learning or developing an existing interest. And that's what really excites me. I think it's probably one of my most privileged parts of my role is seeing people with a passion and an interest asking for help we're in a position that we can grant them either networks and resources or, or finance and you see them when they come back and they've developed, they've grown, they've they've expanded their knowledge and, and there are great examples all around Scotland of people who have learnt by, by being supported by RAS through different scholarships that are now industry leaders making a real difference to, to our sphere. So it's a real no-brainer from my perspective because at the end of the day, you would hope that somebody in Scottish agriculture who is supported by RAS and the organisation to go and study and learn, hopefully they'll be able to contribute more to the society and to the, the sector. So it's a it's a virtuous, positive circle from my perspective. So RAS support a whole lot of traditional but useful rural skills and the training therein. Things like farriery, 
the new forge at Ingolston is all set up to support the Scottish team. And the support that they give to the shearing guys, these guys are at the top of their game, translates directly into...